A few weeks ago, I appeared on True Empiricism's channel and attempted to explain some different aspects of evolution to him. I didn't get the opportunity to do that there, but some truly wonderful YouTubers gave me the ability to expand on my points later. Links to their videos are in the description. So two points to clear up before I begin. First, yes, I know this video is late, you'll have to forgive me. Second, I'll not go through every point that I wanted to make in the original talk, as I feel those thoughts have been adequately fleshed out in chats I've since been in. Rather, the only point I want to hit on here is the importance of reproduction, since it would appear that both True Empiricism and G-Man fail to understand the process. This isn't especially surprising, as many creationists underestimate its importance. Just look at Kent Hovind with his skateboards don't evolve into airplanes quip. In one sense, he's right. Skateboards don't evolve into airplanes, simply because skateboards don't evolve. Part of the reason for this is that neither skateboards nor airplanes give birth to other skateboards or airplanes. Immediately, the average person can understand that the lack of cells, reproductive abilities, and alleles make trying to draw similarities between vehicles and living organisms untenable. But true empiricism and G-Man aren't average people. Ironically, both claim to grasp how evolution works, and yet neither can understand why vehicles don't make good analogies for organisms. G-Man even went so far recently as to challenge the devilishly handsome biologist P.Z. Myers to a debate, and in doing so, G-Man made some radical claims regarding scissors in his video, Why Evolutionist No Evolution Can't Be Proven. About that title, not to be overly pedantic, but is it supposed to read why evolutionists know? I, I don't know, so let's just get to the clip. All I gotta do is use the brain that was given to me by my intelligent designer and realize that this shares a common ancestor with iron. And I can actually prove that by showing you what this was made out of. Go figure! Yes, you heard that right. Scissors share a common ancestor with iron because scissors have iron in them. In response to this, Myers quickly crippled G-Man's argument. Okay. Well, wasn't that interesting. So, because he can show that his scissors are made of iron, he's willing to concede that they are descended from metal. Um, well, that's easy then. All life on Earth is made of cells. Therefore, common descent is demonstrated. We're done. Based on this short viewing alone of G-Man's reasoning abilities, I'm not so sure he should be walking around with those scissors, especially not without parental supervision. But anyway, G-Man's argument is clearly trying to poke fun at homologous structures. And I'll spend an entire video later explaining what homologous structures are and why they're important. However, for now, we're simply going to look at the process of reproduction with a brief intro to homologous structures, so let's jump right in. Organisms are either sexual or asexual, meaning that they either require a partner to produce offspring or not. Bacteria and archaeans, as well as some disparate eukaryotes, are asexual reproducers, and most eukaryotes are sexual reproducers. Since we are eukaryotes, that means we have nuclei in our cells, true empiricism and G-man, we reproduce sexually. That means we require a partner to copulate. For humans, there are males and females, and whether or not they love each other very much, they require each other to produce offspring. At least for now. In our bodies, our cells become either body cells, also known as somatic cells, or sex cells, also known as gametes. Gametes are known as haploid, since they contain half the genetic material of a normal or diploid cell. In other words, they contain only half the number of chromosomes compared to body cells, and they receive half of that genetic material through the process of meiosis. The reason for this is that we donate half our genetic material to our offspring. That offspring then receives a full set of chromosomes where half come from the mother and half from the father. The interesting thing about those chromosomes is that they're not all the same. 
Often, chromosomal crossing over occurs where two homologous chromosomes, these are chromosomes where one comes from the mother and one from the father, exchange some genetic material. Other times, mutations happen while replicating DNA for gametes that can be harmful, neutral, or beneficial. Either way, the gametes can carry different versions of the same gene, called alleles. Offspring receive an allele from both the father and mother. If the offspring receives two copies of the same gene, then the offspring is homozygous for that gene. If the offspring has two different versions of the same gene, then the offspring is heterozygous for that gene. I explain this concept in my video, The Mathematics of Population Genetics. So, you receive alleles, and then when you reproduce, you pass alleles onto your offspring. Over generations, and thanks to genetic mechanisms like mutations and chromosomal crossing over, populations will vary in the frequencies of alleles. Well, would you look at that? That's evolution! And, what about homologous structures? I'll save the best for later, but the short version is that homology describes shared ancestry between two structures or genes. For instance, the limbs of humans and dolphins are homologous because both are descended from the limbs of the common ancestor between humans and dolphins. We know the structures are homologous because the common ancestor of humans and dolphins reproduced and passed down the genetic material specifying this type of limb. Over generations, the limbs were adapted to different uses by the ancestors of humans and dolphins. But homologies don't solely exist in distantly related organisms. Humans and chimpanzees share a number of homologies, telling us about the common ancestor between the two. For instance, the limbs of humans and chimps are homologous. We don't know from homologous structures alone that organisms are related to each other, but they certainly help to infer evolutionary relationships when they can corroborate precisely with the same genes in other organisms. Now time for a pop quiz. Do skateboards undergo meiosis? Do scissors reproduce sexually or asexually? Do airplanes vary in the allele frequencies over generations? The answer to all of these is no. Inanimate objects, as well as, I hope, true empiricism and G-Man, undergo no part of reproduction. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.